Hey there, everyone. This is Parking Team Shockwave, and today I'm with David Wu. You guys know him as the guy that taught him the Dolce during the, uh, was it last year's uh, Toronto? YTF? No, it was, it was actually like two years ago in 2013. Well, my, Ancient history. My time's a little bit off, but it was during Dragon format, so it was a pretty impressive feat to top uh, during that YCS. I'm here with him again because he just topped in the, the latest regionals that happened uh, last week. What was that, Catskill? It was actually in Danbury, Connecticut All last right, week. Connecticut. Yeah. I'm getting my regional mixed up. So, <laughs> uh, what deck you were playing this time? I was playing Shadal, uh, Shadals, but with like, but it's like different than most Shadal builds because it uses Middle Chase. Oh, all right. Um, you want to get straight to the deck with how? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, so, so first off, like for the Manolches, I played three Manolche and Jelly. This card's obviously, uh, obviously like the best card of the deck. Uh, you special, uh, you normal summon it, special who came from the deck, and it becomes like battle immune, and and it's just really hard to get rid of it, and and, uh, and it's just a really good turn one play when my opponent makes me go first. Like I, I still generally prefer to go second, but when I draw this and I go first, it's like still amazing, and. Uh, I play two who cake. Um, I I don't really play three who cake because I prefer to ha have it in the in the deck for uh, for Madolche and Jelly. Um, I personally never played three who cake ever. Not even like when who cake first came out for some reason, <laughs> which is kind of weird, I suppose. Um, I play two Messenger Lotto, uh, and he's he's the worst card of the deck. I don't I don't really like drawing him, but. He's just somewhat of your searcher, right? Yeah, I, he's ne he's necessary. Um, though what's funny is that in this build, it's like not necessarily bad to draw uh, draw one of them as long as I have like a way to resolve a hookay, because like because like that means next turn I can just normal summon it and threaten with a tiara misu. But yeah, he's just there there to bring out with Who Cake and search out the Midoche spell and traps. And then finally, like I I play one Midoche Mifoy. He's no, he's not exactly great, but he's just there kind of mostly for you know, for utility to search off of ticket like when I need to go off. And um, so these are these are all the Medolches that I played. Um, I don't uh, I didn't play Magellan because um, not it's not that Magellan isn't a great card and stuff like that, but I needed to kind of cut down on normal summons and and the other thing is that like Magellan happens to be fourteen hundred attack points, which is one hundred attack points weaker than Cosmo Farm Girl, which is a huge issue. All right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So yes, so it's, it's quite surprising to see that you actually took the straddles of this deck uh, off the deck. Mm, say what? The Ma Magellan. She's basically the straddles yeah, of the deck. So. Yeah. Like, but I mean, it's like most of the time I I generally prefer summoning uh, summoning the. Uh, Oh, the, oh, these guys like the well, Angelica, rather than add it to your hand. Yeah, because right. uh, like the because th like Magellan is is generally a good uh, is a good general card like especially when I have like have like a way to uh, fusion into Shekinaga but like but but still that that doesn't always happen and usually she just ends up being run over and when she run over by a farm girl that's like a huge problem. Right. But she's still a, she's still a great card. It's just it's just mainly like farm girl being in the meta that I chose not to play her. All right. Yeah, and then. And then so so then after that I put the Shadal part is um two Shadal Beast always good to send in pretty much any any situation drawing cards is always great um, I played two uh, two Shadal Squamata um, you got you want to want him in your hand mm -hmm. you want to open with him so that you can have fusion fodder and then I played one of one of the rest like one dragon uh, one Falco and one Hedgehog just main, mainly for utility like. Um, I don't normally should all build to play like two Falcos and, and two Hedgehogs because they want to continue continue having a fusion fodder. Um, it's it's not really as as important as it is for me, like because I'm not I'm not trying to really spam contract that much. But but th th but they're still really good to have for utility. And and um, honestly, I I think like actually Falco is kind of like the weakest should all uh, like I, like dragons are okay against in, in matchup when I need to destroy their uh, destroy their back row, which I which I normally do. But like Falco is kind of like. I mean, it's good for grind games and stuff like that, but this deck focuses on trying to mainly be aggressive and like having a Falco on the field. It's like, it's not really that that aggressive. That aggressive. It's more kinda, playing defensively. Yeah, it's just kind of there to to just sort of grind out uh, games, though it is useful in that sense for sure. Uh, and um, so so there, there's less there's less Shadals than than most than most Shadal decks run. Uh, so like um. 
Mm. You would, so like it's it's a, it doesn't it doesn't uh, have a, have uh, have as much of a good grind game. Like it can't just spam out constructs and, and win and win against that against like the the Shadal mirror match. But 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 this but I don't need to run as many because like because construct because when because when you because when you have construct like what uh, you need to constantly be sending the dolls from your deck deck to your graveyard or otherwise you'll just burn out of resources. But this one is more focused on Chikanaga, which isn't which doesn't need need as much resources in the deck to send. And so, so that's so that, those are the shadows, and like the final, uh, the final part, which which I, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that later. The final, uh, um, and the other part that I run is um, are the clowns. Everyone knows these. There's uh, I choose to run three damage juggler, three ha uh, one hat tricker, and one trick clown. All right. So you do have some hand traps to protect you from attacking, as well as some other ways to like spam the uh, your lower four plays, the exactly. rank four plays. De definitely, like um, like everyone knows everyone knows what these these things do. And um, as for why I chose to play this particular ratio, like um, I chose to play one of the, these guys at one because like I don't really want to hard draw them that that much. They're kind of just there for search search utility off of damage juggler. But the reason why I chose to play three damage juggler is 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 because of. It's really good to open with with this card, because especially when my opponent forces me to go first. And the reason is because like um, um, when my opponent forces me to go uh, go first, like th then that then that means then that means uh, that they're playing one of three decks most likely. They're either playing uh, Shadals, Necros, or Cosmo. And the thing is, is that like. If you if you if you try to set up a field versus Shadals or or, or, ne or a Necros, then they're they're gonna try to break apart your field with like uh, with like their, their constructs with like Trishula or like Brianak. But the but the other problem is that if you don't put up a field, the, oh, like if you don't if you just don't put up any monsters at all, then then the, the, and you end up playing Cosmo, then they're just gonna play Farm Girl and attack you, and then 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 you're in big trouble. So with this, when so when I open Damage Juggler, assuming that I don't open any. And jelly, I can just just choose the pass turn, like let them let them do what do whatever, pitch a pitch a damage juggler, and, and have it float into one of these guys depending on what I need. So that's why I chose to play three damage uh, damage juggler. All right, and um and um so your was uh, so is this your first time actually testing it out during that regional, or you've been play testing it before in other like locals or in other events? Um oh no de definitely I I've, I've definitely I've definitely play tested uh, play tested a lot like with uh, with like um uh, with like the normal like perform H all builds and stuff and stuff like that. So every everyone knows like the si the synergy between like the Shadals and the and the perform ages. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess I guess the well, the big question is right now is that like how exactly does, does it fit in, fit into the Medolces? Like where where why, where does the Medolces fit into this strategy? But so it's like it's basically basically it's like um um the thing the thing is is that like is that both decks basically cover each other's weaknesses like extremely well. Like um what 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 ends up happening is that like the weaknesses of Medolce is that like. It generates lots of advantage, but the but its main problem is that it doesn't know what to do with the advantage other than to try to make XYZs like TRMSU. But it's mainly hindered by the fact that it's very normal summon reliant. So in so in come the Shadals like what so like when what the Shadals and like Shadal fusion like what you get to do is like you get to you get to take your take your advantage with with Medolces like and their constant floating floating ability and you get to turn it into a, into a big monster Shekinaga and Shekinaga is just like amazing like I I honestly think Shekinaga is like is like probably better than Construct and uh. Mm -mm. And um, like Shekinaga helps like easily win win against like Necros because it like because it because it lets you run over a uni uh, unicorn and um it, and like when they try to Trishula you like you could just pitch it uh, pitch your shit all and negate their Trishula and it's like and the best part about this deck is that like it uses the the, the raw advantage you generate from Who Cake and, and Angeli and you get to make Shekinaga without minusing and so you and so basically like you just. You just like plus a lot and plus a lot, but and you have like Shekinaga for defense as well. Like, cause, cause the thing the thing about like um about like normal Shadals is that like uh, what the performing Shadals is that like you can make construct and you can make a bunch of rank fours and it's really good uh, offensively. But the problem is that like if you don't end up like killing your opponent, then then when it goes to their turn. 
they, they don't really, then you you kind of don't really have much to, uh, to stop them, like like from just summoning, like say, like Trishula or like tri a Triver. The, the, the that's what that's where the Madoche the, the Madoches or specifically Shekinaga comes in, because like, because like an ideal an ideal play for this deck is to just go like, is to just play your normal like. Construct, uh, construct strategy at first, but then like set El Shadal fusion and like fuse away the uh, fuse away the construct into Shekinaga during your opponent's turn to interrupt their plays. So basically, like it gets this deck, it can play, it can push for the push for make huge pushes for lots of damage. But on the opponent's turn, it can also play defensively and, and disrupt their plays. So that's like basically where the synergy comes in. And like and like um the way that the, the way that the Madoches cover the Shadal's weakness is that like. Is that like um, if it were if it were just normal performing shadows, like if the Madolches weren't there, then like what would happen is that like basically like you if you if you don't open up open up a fusion, you're kind of just stalling, 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 hoping you hoping you draw a fusion, and like if, and if you don't, you kind of just you kind of just lose. So what the Madolches do is that they basically like they they like they uh, they obviously they fill in the space for the um, the weakness of the shadows by keep aggressively pushing the game while you actually draw your cards like El Shadow. Exactly. Exactly. Like you have, you have like a, a, like your uh, like a, a, your own coherent like stra a strategy that you're doing to constantly pressure uh, pressure your opponent rather than to just th than just draw uh, drawing and passing, hoping that you eventually draw a uh, draw fusion. And obviously, like li like uh, like I said, if, like these help by making by making Shekinaga w uh, without minusing yourself, uh, which is really useful against the uh, decks like uh, uh, against like uh, Necroz and like Stellar Knights when they go like Triver or like Trishula on you. And then. Uh, and then, so that, so that's basically where, where the synergy, uh, the synergy comes in, and and um, and with the clowns and the medulla is like um, the 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 synergy here is that like, is that there there is that these are hand traps and they fill the great uh, graveyard for who for who cake and like um and this is you can really easily summon this because as long as you have like, like a like a, a, a like a graveyard fodder for who cake you can banish it and like and then special this and make an easy rank four play. Right. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's the other thing. Like the way that the should all support the middle chase is that like normally like in middle chase like you'd have to play like a lot of hand traps to like fill up the grave for hook cake. But the problem with hand traps is that they're usually reactive and dependent on your opponent's actions. But this like this isn't this not so much because you can just you can just fill up your grave with shadows like like even without without relying on you like your opponent to like do some kind of action. So you're always like being aggressive, which is which is just why I really like this deck. And like, and oh, and there's a, a few more monsters. Like, uh, there's a few more monsters like that that I play, which is like a uh, two effect Valor. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, which is a, a two a two effect Valor, and uh, and two uh, two Ghost Ogre, and finally the last monster is an Arch Phoenix Centric. And um, normally, like when I when I first played it, I was thinking of like replacing one one of these uh, one of these two uh, two hand traps for Maxis. But um, the reason why I ended up choosing to play these is because is because they're lights. Uh, I figured like I I would, like my original idea was to use Norden uh, was to like use Maxi to counter instant fusion Norden plays. But I figured like it was more more important to have like the lights for like the the ease to make uh, to make construct because like this deck can still make construct and construct is still is still a really good monster to summon. But like uh, so so I decided to like play extra lights for more consistency and um especially Arch Phoenix Sentry because it's like just a really great card that can like out anything anything that you want uh, to basically like you can play it to uh, to act like as an MST you can play it to normal summon to outlaw floodgate monsters like dark law and if you don't need it for any for any of those you can just use it as light fu light fusion material and it's such an underrated card but um these these are basically the monsters all right so how much muscle is that in total 25 25 yes 20, uh, 25 uh, 25 monsters uh, um, a lot of them are hand traps that that are, that are used that are used for defense basically all right. like the damage jugglers to prevent otks and, and the maxis and effect failures too and then the, for the spells it's um the obvious three shit all fusion three l shit all fusion and uh, and um, pretty pretty standard right there. Um, I played three instant fusions. Um, 
if it if it were any if it were any other deck, like I would only I would only be playing two instant fusions. But the reason why I played the third instant fusion in this case is because like it acts as the the extra shit all monster without having to actually play a shit all monster. Because like instant fusion just does like so many different things like in one card as well, and and like its versatility. Like I I'm a I'm a huge fan of versatility because like this this card acts like a, as a level three for for your typical Medolce combos. It acts as Norden for your rank four plays. It acts as Winda for your uh, to, to act as a shit all when you have like just a light and a fusion spell and you need a shit all to make a fusion play. And and oh and finally it acts as a light monster with Panzer Dragon, which is which which you can also use to pop stuff too, if necessary. But um but yeah, it's it's mainly the fact that it acts as Winda that I chose to play the third instant fusion. Like if I were playing just pure performing shit alls, I would only probably play two instant fusions, because you already have enough shit alls as it is, but like this well, I chose to play three. It's 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 really it's it's just a really good card and like um and my other two spells are Medolce Chateau and Medolce Ticket um these you kind of don't really want to draw these that much you kind of want to search them off of uh, uh, off of Messengelato like um they're they're really good because they let, they let your monsters flow and like most of the time you're just you're getting them for free so that even if, you're, if even if your opponent MSTs like MST them it, it doesn't really matter because like you got them off of uh, off of Messengelato so uh, off of a free plus one. So they're they're kind of down on cards, like regardless, and um, a bunch of obvious staples: book of, book of moon, foolish burial, mind control. I chose not to play Regeki because for the same logic as like most Necros decks, because like I figured my monsters are strong enough to kill their uh, kill their monsters already. I kind of really don't need Regeki that much, and uh, so instead uh, for my final card, I just chose to play a creature swap. Um, this is mainly just because, like, uh, uh, like uh, for the synergy between like the, the clowns, like you could uh, you could swap a damage juggler over to them and then float your damage juggler into something else. But and also the other reason was because it's because I was afraid of Cliff Forts. Like Cliff Forts was one of my worst matchups, uh, uh, probably the worst matchup. And so I just tech, tech this in to like try to help deal with like a sacrificed monster. All right. And that's that's basically the the entire main deck. Like I I chose not to play any traps because like. I don't because uh, like this deck tries to be like aggressive, like uh, as as aggressive as possible, uh, but and like traps don't really help do that. And but like it can it can be aggressive, but it can also be defensive as well with like the effect veilers, like and the damage jugglers to bring like OTKs and like and like crazy plays and stuff. All right. Yeah. So that so that was so that was basically the main deck. Um, for the extra deck, like, uh, chose to play, uh, I, I chose to play, uh, two Medolce Tiaramisu, uh, pretty standard for, for Medolce decks, like, you, you play two, like, well, well, if the first one dies, you just bring out the second one to shuffle the first one back in. Um, I play, I play one Levier, uh, Levier for the Medolce combos, um, one, one thing that I didn't, didn't play that most Medolce decks do play is I didn't, I don't play Invoker, there's not enough room, and the fact that I can constantly, like, great Medolce's, uh, put Medolce's into the grave with like the fusion spells meant that I didn't really need Invoker because I'd usually have like a banished <laughs> a Medolce for like Levier. And um, so, th so these are ba the basic Medol Medolce XYZs. And then um, and then like I used Castell, Dweller, uh, Exiton for staple rank fours. Um, instant fusion targets. Flame goes for. Uh, uh, it, it can honestly, it can be any level. Uh, it can be any level three uh, you want. Like it's just there for uh, for mainly for like um uh, uh, for uh, for like a level three combo that you do with like a uh, with like the hoo cake uh, to uh, to bring out tr levy or tr Um it, uh, Honestly, any one of them work. I but uh, but I felt like flame ghost was a little bit better because like just in case like. Because uh, I needed to like, make like Winda, because like, because like the other two choices are Fusionist and Dragonist of the Wicked Knight, and like Fusionist is an Earth. Like I can, I already have a whole bunch of Earths. Like I don't really need it for the sake of like making Shekinaga, but like, uh, but like um, uh, I I did want this because because it, it was dark, so I can make Winda in the matchup where I needed to make that. And Dragonist of the Wicked Knight is Wind, and that doesn't really do anything, so I chose not to play her. But but really, it's just minor. It's just really minor differences, and uh, one Norden. 
um, I didn't play multiple Nordens because I because I honestly didn't think I would uh, resolve Instant Fusion more than more than maybe one uh, once per duel. And even if I did, there's there uh, I I was very unlikely like thinking that I'd need two Nordens because especially since like if I if I chances are if I if I bring out a Norden for like a rank four, it'll be like a Castell. And so like even if I played like a second Norden, like I, it's not like I would be able to fit in a second Castell. So it's like I just chose not to play uh, play a second Norden. Still very useful. I've, Everyone knows what he does, and um, oh, I played, I played, I played only one Winda because like, I don't, I don't really like, I don't really play that many Shadals. Like, I kind of, I kind of don't really like going into Winda that much, except for like a few particular matchups against like, uh, against like say heavy back row decks where, where where I need to like protect my stuff from being destroyed. Like for example, Ritual Beast and, uh, to protect it, uh, to like to protect it itself against like Ritual Beast steeds, for example, that would normally destroy all my other monsters. Um, other than that, I, I kind of don't really use it, other than just like for that and maybe like instant fusion utility. And um, I also I also played a uh, played a Panther Dragon for for a light target. Um, I don't really get I didn't really ever use its pop effect. I kind of just uh, use it to have, like have a light material in case I needed it. And um, uh, only two El Shadal Construct like. Once again, like the construct is still a great monster, a, a, a great monster to summon. Like she basically beats over beats over anything mo or most things that Tiaramisu can't can't beat over or can't get over with her own effects. Um, uh, so uh, so she so she and Tiaramisu are like are like almost like the perfect team because like Tiara, t cause, like Tiaramisu gets rid of annoying things like Forerunner that like ha and Yang Zings that have graveyard effects when they when they die by battle and like. And like construct gets rid of gets rid of huge monsters that can make themselves like unaffected by card effects like like for example oh, example like Falgrand. Not that I played any Falgrand, but that's just, it's just why they're like they're like they're like a really good like off offensive duo. Like, but there, though there's one exception that that like or that the monster for the, that like TRMC you can't get over, and neither can construct, and that's Clifforts, which is why which is why Clifforts are one of my worst matchups. <laughs> but um yeah, only two constructs because I don't need to play three because I'm not trying to construct spam. Uh, and um, but but I am uh, focused on she uh, making Shekinaga, so hence I played two Shekinaga. Um, probably probably the best card of the deck, probably better than construct just because of the fact that it's big. It can run it can run over most things that construct can. But the fact that it can interrupt opponents' plays and like like for example like Triver and Trishula, like just in my opinion, just make it way better than construct. And the final monster that I didn't, didn't really get to summon is Trishula. Um, it's e it's kind of easy to make it with like Norden, and also you can do like a, a set Falco and go like uh, and go like Hookake Messing Gelato for two plus three plus four. I I never really made it, but it's too good not to play in my opinion. <laughs> and then like uh, uh, and then for uh, for my side deck um. It's, it's um it's not, nothing nothing too special like it's just three uh, three MSTs. Um, I didn't. Um, I was thinking of maining these, uh, these, but I figured like I had foolish burial for dragon, and I played arch phoenix centric, so I fig I figured I didn't need to main deck these, so I sided them instead. Um, two uh, two maxis. Since I didn't main the maxis, I had to side side them. A very useful card. Uh, two retaliating C. Um, I sided this in because I was expecting to play a lot of Shadal mirrors. I've never actually ended up playing against a Shadal mirror, uh, uh, a Shadal mirror, and though I did play a uh, uh, play against um, Infernoid, but I never drew this uh, drew this against them. So honestly, like I would I would just honestly not side this card. I I really don't think it's that good other than than, than Shadal mirror, and I'd rather just find more useful cards for the Shadal mirror. And um, uh, let's see. Two Lila Lightsworn Sorceress is just is just what I use to uh, help deal with like um, annoying back row heavy decks. Like for example, like Cliff Forts, because uh, I can just normal summon it and like destroy destroy back row and then fusion uh, fusion it away for like uh, for like uh, uh, extra utility. It's, uh, I think I think it's a I think it's just a really a really great way to deal with like floodgates. Um, uh, I play two artifact Lantia to deal with like things like Ritual Beast and for and Foranoids. Uh, Necros for oh, so that they can't trishula me. Uh, uh, an extra creature swap for Clifford's because I was because uh, uh, I was uh, really afraid of Clifford's. Um, Rigeki. Uh, 
Um, one uh, one breakthrough skill. I probably should have played more, but I what I just played this for for fear of like for random floodgate monsters like Majesty's Fiend, Dark Law, etc. And the last uh, and the last side deck card was uh, was El Shadal and Oitilis that that I decided in for uh, just for Necros. Uh, what was your target for water? Oh, the, the the target the target for water was Nordic. All right, all right, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, David, thank you again for the deck profile. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other mentions about your matchup over at the uh, regionals? You did have what one loss throughout the whole event. Yeah, the, the one loss I actually uh, 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 I ended up losing to was Necros. Like the the, the the person's a really good player. He ended up win, uh, winning the whole event, and not uh, and um and also like I kind of. Messed up because I because I I because since I sided in Noitilis I forgot that that it, that it was in my extra deck during game two and three and I uh, uh, well game two actually uh, and so I so in game two I I could have made a Noitilis but I kind of forgot that I could so that was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> All right. Uh, any others you want to mention like any shoutouts or uh, to anyone in the video that helped you um, with this deck? Um. It's, um. Uh, I just, I just like, uh, like to uh, sh uh, shout out to uh, to my friends for like, uh, for like uh, being there for me and supporting me and playing, uh, 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 playing Yu-Gi-Oh with me. And um, and I'm re really glad that you're all my friends and everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right then, David. Thank you again for the Dagger file. This is Parkinson Shockwave signing out. Yep.